Thank you, Andreas. Thank you, Commissioner, for this wonderful speech. It really sets the tone, it sets the scene on uh, this conference and uh, gives uh, the right messages that we need to see on how we proceed and what space, defense, and cybersecurity can do together. So, dear Commissioner, dear representatives of uh, the Italian establishment, uh, dear members of the parliament, uh, and also representatives of the European Commission, it is such a pleasure to be here in front of you as the Director General of the European Space Agency in this place here in Frascati in Esrin, which used to be my home for 15 years. I have uh, been working here before the very able leadership of now Simonetta Kelly, who is, uh, has been taking over my position as uh, Director of Earth Observation and Head of ESRIN. So I know the area very well and I know the context extremely well and I'm very pleased to welcome you all, including my old colleagues and staff members uh, of the European uh, Space Agency who have been working here building up wonderful projects and still keep pushing very hard to success for Europe. So it is quite a pleasure to be here for such a, an important topic, but also in front of such a, an influential community. And I really see many of you who are key people in advancing defense, space, cybersecurity. And I'm very pleased and very honored to be here and uh, address you as, uh, uh, as Director General of ESA on the side of uh, space, what space can contribute to all this. Many of you may know me well. I'm a man of candor, but especially of action. And therefore, I've committed myself uh, throughout my whole career to serve our European citizens uh, with all the work we are doing with our space technology and our space programs. Because I've always considered that space infrastructure is a tool, is a tool for our citizens, is a tool for our countries to succeed. And therefore, an opportunity for positive and constructive progress, a tool for uplifting humankind, a tool for better understanding and protecting the earth, a tool to boost our economies, and a tool for political leaders to shape and build the European identity. And this is something that is very dear to my heart. Copernicus, which I had the pleasure and honor to build up with thousands of people across Europe, is a very good example of exactly that. But today, let us be audacious and not shy away from uh, what has been a discreet but clear driving force for space efforts of its technology breakthroughs, of pushing the boundaries of collective will, our security and defense. And why do I say discreet? Because Europe has been shy in coming to terms with the legitimate role of cooperative space, which it plays in our security and in our geostrategic uh, independence. And it is now a fact. Europe's space and defense autonomy has become one of our continent's foremost priorities, as we have just also heard very clearly from Commissioner Kobilius. Europe has long chosen its own cooperative excellence-driven path, concentrating on, uh, on areas such as science, critical applications, and safety. And we have been building up our world capacity in exactly those domains. Through this soft power, Europe has been a beacon of light, of hope, and of progress in the eyes of the entire world. We can only be proud of all these achievements. Meanwhile, the space policies and programs of our international partners, friends and uh, competitors alike, have a substantial degree and are driven now much more by another priority, which is defense. For example, the United States GPS system is a military application made available to civilian users and international partners, whereas Galileo, our European equivalent, was conceived as you may recall, as a civilian program under civilian control, making the subsequent critical use of Galileo by defense communities a very complex process in which civilian approaches had to be adapted to unfamiliar security constituencies and much more stringent military requirements. Today, the United States is 
set to invest about $175 billion in its Golden Dome in record time. And China has already demonstrated the use of uh, defense-ready technologies in space years ahead of what Europe can currently accomplish. So let's be clear. While some of Europe's countries with a defense space infrastructure each operate roughly 10 military satellites, China and the US count them in the hundreds, if not thousands. Every five minutes, a Chinese satellite flies overhead. That makes about three flybys by the time I finish this statement. This means that Europe is not just trailing behind. It actually means that we are not playing the same, ga the same game in the same league, at least not yet. And we are realizing this just as immense threats loom at our border. It was very clearly explained how large these threats are and how urgent it is to move forward and establish our capacities. Ukraine, whose future security in Europe, in Europe's most fundamental strategic priority, still relies on American space data, not European. The Commission President, Ursula von der Leyen, said in her State of the Union address just two days ago, I quote, we must invest in real-time space surveillance so that no movement of forces goes unseen. How timely, given the intrusion of Russian drones over Polish sovereign territory just a couple of days ago. But the Commission President and Europe are lucky that ESA, together with the European Commission, are already working on exactly that, to establish a real-time space surveillance system together, obviously, with our member states. ESA is the tool of its member states, and I really would like to take the opportunity to thank all the member states of ESA who are here. The ambassadors are invited uh, to this event, but in particular also Italy, here a very strong space nation, Teodoro Valente as the president of ASI and his team are here in large numbers and really a big thank you to all the effort and the support given throughout the years. So ESA is a tool of its member states and ESA offers an opportunity to support key security entities such as the European Union, including of course the EU Satellite Center in Torrejon, but also NATO, the European Defense Agency, OCA, to name just a few. The agency is your tool as, Europe, as Europe's architect and developer of complex space systems offering unchallenged expertise. There is no other organization in Europe that better combines technical excellence with, uh, with uh, hands-on project management skills. The agency's workforce of about 6,000 is doing this every single day since 50 years as we are celebrating our 50th anniversary of the creation of ESA this year. And I don't believe that we have the luxury today of turning our backs on cooperation, or worse, deepening fragmentation, one of Europe's unfortunate flaws expressed so clearly also by Mr. Draghi just in last year's report. In your report, in your own words, Commissioner Kobilius, you say that Europe is preparing for war. Now, the urgency of, of the threat we face requires that we work with today's tools that we are already having at our disposal. In this respect, I'm convinced that ESA provides the opportunity for our member states, for the European Commission to implement the security requirements, including also in defense. Of course, ESA will never replace national efforts or sovereign capabilities. ESA can be entrusted with the security capability segments that can be shared and shared in a pooling and sharing approach where each owner re retains full control of his or her systems but benefits from others who can offer access capabilities and vice versa. It will be more efficient if space systems are federated and it will be bring operational added value to national defense communities. In addition, ESA and the European Union through the European Commission will add capacity and provide its contribution in the pooling and sharing philosophy to significantly enhance 
observation frequency, and add new technologies. But also, ESA's role should be to create the system architecture so that all the systems and contrib contributions can interact seamlessly res while respecting, obviously, the highest security requirements. And we are still, as we are still discussing what I regard as an inevitable evolution, not a revolution, in Europe's uh, space activities, defense capabilities are already building up in space far from the public's eye. I have met frequently with uh, General Philippe Adam, the head of the French Space Command, until just a few weeks ago, and he has long been adamant that the first battleground in any modern conflict will now be space. Not air, not sea, but space. And why is this? Because no modern strategic planning or military system can do without the key data gathered and relayed from space. And we are not talking about science fiction. Events that used to be largely classified are now openly available for public information, precisely to raise awareness, to prepare citizens for a new era of security, for new threats and new collective efforts. Need I recall the previous French Defense Minister Florence Barley's warning when she disclosed the hostile eavesdropping of the Franco-Italian secure satellite Athena Fidos by Russia's Luch Olymp in 2017. This was a space policy game changer that uh, required political courage. It started changing mindsets. Need I recall that in November 2021, just four months prior to the invasion of Ukraine, Russia proceeded with an anti-satellite test destroying one of its own satellites, but unnecessarily creating thousands of fragments of space debris. What was the point of this except intimidation, a smoking gun, signaling an imminent invasion? Do I need to recall the Russian cyber attack on Viasat, the US SATCOM infrastructure used by Ukrainian forces as the first offensive wave of the invasion of Ukraine on the 24th of February 2022, even before a single missile had been launched. Again, a cyber attack aimed at ground segments that hampered Ukrainian defense responses and sent critical ripples all the way to German energy infrastructure. Need I recall, and as also recalled by the Commissioner, that GPS jamming and spoofing has since been used to, on a permanent basis, over, over and around Ukraine as a hybrid warfare strategy towards neighboring EU countries. It is well documented and we observe it every single day over Finland, Poland, Lithuania or Bulgaria where airplanes suddenly lose position, navigation and timing signals. Thankfully, the Galileo secure PRS signal will be available by the end of this year a service designed to protect against interference and spoofing. We must up our game in space and defense. This is undisputed, but it also requires bold political decisions. This is the message that you, Commissioner Kobelius, and also I, myself have been relentlessly explaining to our member states. ESA is not a security actor, but is unquestionably a security provider. There's a very fine line in this distinction. ESA will never operate intelligent satellites, but it can provide the space infrastructure to a designated operator, as we already do in Galileo. And let me also be very clear. My goal is to make sure that ESA is the right body to support the Union's and Member States' security and defense interests in space and from space. We have proved so by building Galileo, and delivering its secure PRS signal by building Italy's outstanding dual-use IRIDE program with the development of independent access to space through our launchers uh, Ariane 6 and Vega C, with the game-changing cybersecurity and cyber defense capabilities being built as we speak in our European Security and Education Center in Belgium, to name just a few. And my task now is not only to safeguard and protect Europe's critical assets, but to anticipate its needs for tomorrow. 
with Commissioner Kobilius, we have therefore agreed on a coordinated effort to build European resilience from space, a system of system, which is composed of three pillars. Earth observation in support of uh, EOGS, navigation with LEO PNT, and secure communications in preparation of Iris Square. This effort should, for example, bring ISR capabilities and revisit times down to 20, 30 minutes at any point of our planet. The European Resilience from Space program will be open to subscription in November during the ESA Council at ministerial level in preparation of the European Union's EUGS program, which we expect to start in the next MFF from 2028 onwards. Our vision is long-term and structured. I believe this new bold cooperation with the EU is an important step in permanently integrating security in our collective data. But if I say that our vision is long-term, we have to provide quickly results and infrastructure. And my goal and my ambition is, together with the European Commission, to launch the first satellites of the ERS constellation by 2028 and gradually building up this capacity. Therefore, the ESA Council meeting at ministerial level in November is a key milestone and it provides a litmus test of what we can achieve together. And all of you and all of us are sitting in the same boat. We're all working to achieve exactly the same, to secure the future of Europe, the security of our citizens across our continent. Thank you so much.